So it looks as though Twitter may have just crossed the line, the point of no return. So Twitter and Facebook too, but I'm mostly going to talk about Twitter. Uh, Twitter has been, been behaving like a petulant child for months, ever since Trump made this big proclamation about actually enforcing Section 230, which would require Twitter to do a number of things to be a platform instead of a publisher. Twitter has been like, they've been like a child testing their boundaries. They're like, ooh, can we block this person? Can we block that person? Can we put notifications on Trump's account to block things that we think are dangerous while at the same time doing nothing to Joe Biden? And I think that they have finally crossed the line. So I'm not going to recount the whole story. Many of you probably already know it. If you don't know the specifics of what happened, I'm sure Tim Pool has talked about it. Um, Tucker Carlson did a great segment last night, so go watch Tucker's segment on it. But just high level, the New York Post, one of the longest running newspapers in the country, one of the biggest media outlets in the country, ran this story yesterday. You can see yesterday's cover, Biden's secret emails revealed Ukrainian exec thanked Hunter Biden for opportunity to meet with Veep Dad, for which they just happen to pay Hunter Biden like $50,000 for it. Now, I don't think it comes as any shock that Hunter Biden is shady. Hunter Biden has always been shady. No one is surprised that Hunter Biden is shady. Joe Biden loves his son, obviously. Listen, man, I actually do have a lot of sympathy. I mean, Joe Biden has lost so many members of his family, including his children. Hunter, Hunter is what he has left. I know he loves his son. I don't think anyone should question whether or not Joe Biden loves his son. That doesn't mean Hunter Biden is not shady, though, Joe. And if you're ready to be president of the United States, this becomes fair game. Now, of course, the press has not been doing their job at all when it comes to investigating Joe Biden because they're blatantly in the pocket of Joe Biden. They're focusing all their angst on Trump and making everything Trump does look bad. So I don't think anyone, though, really expected that both Twitter and Facebook would go so far as to completely censor this story from the New York Post. I mean, dude, when I say censoring, here's what happened. If you tried to post a link to this story on Twitter, nope, couldn't do it. If you posted information or links to this story or like screenshots of it, they blocked your account. They suspended your account or locked your account. Kaylee McEnany, the White House press secretary, got suspended. Jack Posobiec got, or got her account locked down. Jack Posobiec got his account locked down. I think James Woods got his account locked down. Everyone and their mother that was sharing the story got their account locked down. And so then what the House Republicans did is they posted this story on a government website. And guess what Twitter did? Twitter put a warning on the government webs or a warning to the link saying if people clicked on that link to the government website are you sure you want to follow this link because it could be dangerous information it is a government flipping website and so now we're in a position of wondering what happens next what happens next in this whole affair and I know a lot of you are like, you know, the House, the, the Republicans in Congress, they never do anything. They talk a big game and then they never do anything. Dude, I think they're going to have to. I don't see any other way around it. I think that what they were probably doing was waiting until after the election, kind of banking on Trump getting reelected and then going after big tech. But they're going to have to move a lot quicker now because this is not OK. Listen. I don't care which side of the spectrum you fall in on. I really don't like left, right, center, whatever. We shouldn't be censoring access to information from some of the top media outlets in the country. This is Orwellian. This is the most, this is actually terrifying when you think about it. This is the most Orwellian thing that I can think of that has happened in my lifetime. A major newspaper censored completely on the two biggest tech platforms in the world. These platforms, by their own admission, are the public square. And I'm going to prove that. Let me let, I'll, let me bring up this tweet. This is a tweet that Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, sent in September 5th, 2018, a little over two years ago. He said, Twitter cannot rightly serve as a public square if it's constructed around the personal opinions of its makers. We believe a key driver of a thriving public square is the fundamental human right of freedom of opinion and freedom of expression. And then they blocked a credible news story with mountains of evidence. And you can even see right here, you can even see what they're literally promoting on my Twitter account right now. I swear I didn't plan this. I just noticed this. What they're promoting right now 
Joe Biden did not push out a Ukrainian prosecutor for investigating his son, the Washington Post reports. Now, that's not quite the same story, and those of us who understand the story understand that, but they're in Joe Biden's pocket, man. They want him to win. They're trying to cheat to get him to win. And I just don't think it's going to fly this time. I think that they have pushed it too far. You're censoring a major newspaper just because you can, and then you censor a government website. Twitter, where the hell do you get off? This is not your place, especially when your CEO has flat out said that the goal is to serve as the public square. And it looks as though House Republic, or excuse me, congressional Republicans are not having it. This is a breaking news story from the Post Millennial. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey will be subpoenaed to testify before Congress after censorship scandal. So we're going to do a quick read of the story. We're going to see what congressional Republicans kind of have up their sleeve and have in store for us. But guys, I just need to do a quick reminder. If you enjoy my videos, maybe you've watched a couple of them. I'm really trying to hit my 100,000 subscriber goal by the election day. I've got about 20 days left to do it. I still think we can make it, but I need your help. If you enjoy my content, if you want to continue to support my work, please consider hitting that little red subscribe button down there somewhere, turning on notifications, leaving a comment, letting me know what you think. It really does help me out. YouTube has been ep epically screwing with my channel for the past month and a half. It's made it really difficult for me to grow. I was growing at a really steady clip until they started screwing with my channel. Now it's made it a little bit harder, but that's okay because you guys are in control over whether or not you hit that subscribe button. I know I sound a little funny today because I got a bit of a head cold. I promise I don't have COVID. I can't give it to you through the camera anyway. Um, but, uh, but I really do do my best to do daily content around news, politics, culture, critical race theory, social justice, all that good stuff. And I really, really appreciate the support. All right, let's read what's going on. Senator Ted Cruz announced Thursday that Jack Dorsey, Twitter's CEO, will be subpoenaed to testify before the Senate next week. Mm -mm, this is going to be better than ACB hearings, man. At issue is that Twitter is continuing to block shares of stories concerning corruption on the part of Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden, which Cruz calls election interference. We've got this tweet here from the Bradford file. Ted Cruz, the Senate Judiciary Committee on Tuesday will be subpoenaing, will, we will be voting to subpoena Jack Dorsey to come before the judici ju ju judiciary and test. What was that from? That was from some sort of comic. I don't, oh, you know what it was? It was Dana Carvey. When, if you've never seen Dana Carvey's like skit around the OJ trial, he, he really struggles with the word judiciary. I know, side note, but you should watch it because it's funny as hell. Okay. Uh, they will be voting to subpoena Jack Dorsey to come before the judiciary and testify next Friday and answer questions as to why he's interfering in this election and why he is censoring the press. I think that those are very, very, very good questions. This morning, the story escalated and even got worse, Cruz said. The New York Post broke a second story of a series of emails that indicate yet more corruption. In this instance, the Biden family receiving millions of dollars from uh, communist China government officials. And I actually did tweet this story out earlier. So it is on my Twitter, uh, which is Dr. Carlin B, if you're looking for a link to that. Just minutes ago, I tried to share that story on Twitter, and Twitter is actively blocking right now, this instant, stories from the New York Post alleging corruption and the Biden family receiving millions of dollars from communist China. What could possibly go wrong, folks? And again, I have to say, if you're voting for Trump, if you're voting for Biden, this should be an issue that we should all be able to get behind. They shouldn't be doing this. They should not be censoring this information. Even if you are a hardcore vote blue, no matter who, you are always going to vote for Joe Biden, no matter what, and you're not changing your mind, fine, fine. But you should still have access to this information. This is the only way our society can work is freedom of speech freedom of the press. And yes, Twitter and Facebook are private companies. They're, they're publicly um, traded, so we can make an argument there. But I'm at the point right now where I say, like, this is going to be treated like a public utility. Twitter and Facebook have got to stop. And it's been made clear to them that they need to stop. And they aren't doing it on their own. They have to become a public utility. They can't be banning people just because they don't like what they say. 
This is election interference, and we are 19 days out from an election. It has no precedent in the history of democracy. The, sh the Senate Judiciary Committee wants to know what the he <laughs> I'm going to guess that's hell, is going on. Chairman Lindsey Graham and I discuss this at length, and the committee today will be noticing a markup on Tuesday to issue a subpoena to Jack Dorsey, the Twitter, the CEO of Twitter, to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee next Friday to come before this committee and the American people and explain why Twitter is abusing their corporate power to silence the press and cover up allegations of corruption. And let me be clear. I don't know if these New York Post stories are true or not. And he's absolutely correct. That's actually not the point. These are questions Vice President Biden should answer. But Twitter and Facebook and big tech billionaires don't get to censor political speech and actively interfere in the election. That's what they're doing right now. Cruz said that the committee would be voting on the subpoena on Tuesday. This comes after Twitter and Facebook both suppressed the sharing of New York Post articles that alleged that Joe Biden was less than forthright about his dealings with Ukraine energy company Burisma, upon whose board his son Hunter sat. On Thursday, the Post continued its bombshell reporting into alleged corruption with regard to Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, and China. And that's all we've got there. I will link this story in the description below. But guys, I think that this is very exciting. I think this is good. I think this gives the Senate, or excuse me, the congressional Republicans a chance to find their balls and to actually do something about it. And really, like, all of you who live in one of their districts, you've got to be, hang on, is that a notification? You've got to be pressuring people into actually doing something. If you live in like Ted Cruz's district, please call his office and demand he do something about this. If you live in any of their districts, you've got to call them and demand that they make this stop. And again, this should be a nonpartisan issue. If you don't want censorship going on against, if you're on the left and you would be pissed if Twitter did this, say, when the New York Times released a story about Donald Trump's tax returns and released private information without his express permission, and you don't want to see that promoted, if you'd be pissed off if Twitter had censored that story, then you should be just as pissed off at this. Principles mean something, guys. Censorship is not good in either direction. It doesn't matter if it helps your side, because if you condone it when it happens with regard to information that you disagree with, that just means you're inviting it to happen to you. We used to understand this. There was a time when I wanted to go to, to law school and become a lawyer with the ACLU to defend free speech in this country. This, this, went back, this is back in the day when the ACLU did, still did that, right? I was like 13 years old, 14 years old, and that was my goal in life, was to defend freedom of speech in this country. ACLU doesn't even do that anymore. But even when I was a teenager, I understood it was a slippery slope. As soon as some bit of speech starts getting censored, it is a quick slide down for speech that you don't want to be censored to get the same treatment. We have to protect these liberties for all of us. Twitter and Facebook are screwing around with this. It is unacceptable in my eyes, and I hope it is in your eyes too. All right, guys, that's all I got for right now. I'll see you soon.